Roselle's bush cricket. It takes some time to realise what I'm hearing. The sound I am straining to catch is masked by the whisper of the breeze percolating through the sea of grass stems. A burst of sunshine and suddenly it's louder. A thin metallic reeling like the static buzz from the overhead power cables. But even now the sound is but the sound thread needs unbraiding from the mild tinnitus that's being beginning to affect this middle aged cricket fan. This is the cricket, this is cricket season, and that high pitched reel is the love song of the Roselle's bush cricket, a new and exciting insect to look and listen for as summer slides into autumn. It's particularly welcome to people in their 50s and older for whom, like me, high frequency sounds are slipping away. The tinny bickering of hedgerow shrews and the echo-locating clicks of noctu noctual bats are a fading memory. But with some relief I defer decline for another day. Roselle's bush cricket is, an, is still audible. My ears haven't deteriorated quite that far and there's life in the old naturalist yet. For me, living here in the English West Midlands, the song is a very modern consolation and an acquaintance built over the last few years. This big, blossy brown insect with its creamy go-faster stripes on it in the march. Once it lurked in a few eastern salt marshes, but by the end of the last century it had embarked on a dramatic northern extension of its range. Since then it has come on in leaps and bounds, and no one can be sure why, but it is likely that warmer winters are helping the eggs to survive. Leaps and bounds isn't the whole story though. A small percentage of Roselle's bush cricket population have extra long wings. When things get crowded for the crickets, these macroturus long-winged individuals can take to the air in search of new ground. They've reached the North Midlands and West Wales and their progress continues apace in open grassy places or overgrown waysides. If you can't hear their song, don't despair. At this time of year, most cricket fanciers over 50 wouldn't go anywhere without their bat detector. Those in the know set the dial around 22 kilohertz, which converts the sound to a guttural buzzing. The cricket stridulates by rubbing toothed ribs on its left forewing against the edge of its right forewing, which is equipped with a flat area called a mirror to amplify its song. Follow the sound carefully and with the luck, the cricket will materialise low and among low vegetation. Then its most obvious feature is the buttery yellow piping along its head shield or pronotum. Armoured as it is, like a medieval warhorse, you half expect it to crank rustily as it shifts through the grass. The only sound though is the thin, thin song stream stitching summer to autumn, a song that will be silenced by the first frosts.